Day one of the European Darts Grand Prix. Cheers to the Euro Tour. Who do you like here? Scotty Too Hotty or J Lo? Mr. Robin Hood, the Swiss don't miss, and a beard to be feared, or the Hex, the Jinx, and the Kurtz. And how about the 180 machine? He's on fire. But would it be a fond farewell for Big H on the Euro Tour? Darts, and then some, today on High Roller Radio. Yes, the darts rolls on. We are back on the straight and narrow. First of two sessions in Sindelfingen. The Euro Tour is back, announced the PDC. Rob Malarkey and Paul Nicholson providing the preview. They'll be joined in the broadcast booth this weekend by Dan Dawson. So, full confession, I woke up this morning and had the World Cup on my mind, so I started to make memes. This one, my prediction, by the way, oh, Canada, oh, yes. And then when the draw came out, I learned it was Canada v. Northern Ireland, round one, match of the century. So I made this Superman and the Maker. Don't worry, we got this. Jeff Smith, Matt Campbell, looking to play spoiler. So, question, high rollers. Why was I making memes when the darts was on? Silly me. Had no idea. If not for my pal Andrew Dugan, it might have been the meme dream all day long. Jonathan Worsley v. Mike Kivenhoven up first. And as Andrew tells us, Kivenhoven went 174, then 180. No nine darter, but he did score an 11 for 4-2. The Welshman held to stay close on tops. And then he pinned double three for four apiece. Thank you again, sir. Then ninth leg drama and a disaster for Worsley. Multiple misses at double, just couldn't find one. He was broken and it was all over the very next leg. Double 20 for the 6-4 result and handshakes. I'm lucky to be the winner, Kyvan Hoven said, but I'm very happy. Next up, the Lithuanian Mendingus Baraskas in tough against Mervyn King, but he was holding his own pretty nicely. Fourth leg, first blood, double 14 for the break, and 3-1. It actually got to 4-2, but from there, the experience of King became quite evident. He took three on the trot for his first lead of the contest, and then in the decider, he'd close it out, no problem. Six five-year final on his next opponent, MVG. I know what I can do, he said. If I turn up, he's got a real difficult game. Luke Woodhouse did not bring his A game against this young man, Ricardo Petrechko, and he paid the price big time. The kid can play. Made no mistake on tops to consolidate a break of throw, and from 3-1, he just kept pounding that red bit all the way to the finish line. No contest this. 6-1 the final Congrats to him, his first ever victory on the Euro Tour, hashtag milestones. Come on, David Evans, tweeted Charlie Gray. I guess we know who the boss wanted to win. Evans up against Kai Goddard. After winning his tour card from the Challenge Tour, Evans came in with a dark case full of confidence, and it showed too. Nice grouping on the ton 40 right here. He had daylight at 4-2, playing superbly, and that is no stretch, my friends. He wins it easily, 6-2, a ton plus average, and look at that, nicely done, 100.29. I'm confident in my game, he said. I've been playing well the past few months. What a start, tweeted Charlie Gray. And yes, sir, Evans' next game is against Menser. Solid start for Scott Waits. Out in front of Jason Lowe, 3-0, averaging 90. That'll do. By the way, a not-so-capacity crowd on hand at the Glass Palast. One, two, three people loving the darts. One or two more, and they'll be out of control, said Dave O'Toole. No Dutch crowd tweeted outside 180. They have restrictions traveling to Germany. Also, because of COVID-19, said Philip Wolf. I think they should make the Friday afternoon session behind closed doors but still on the stream. Fans or no fans, low, storm back to level, thanks in large part to two-ton-plus punch-outs, the 102, then the Monster 140, and it was 4-4, then 5-5, crunch time in the shootout. How about the tale of two visits? First, the Robin Hood from low, and then the maximum from Scotty to Naughty. 6-5 the final. My scoring was all or nothing there, he said. Tomorrow against Ian White, 
I have to put it all together. Nico Kurtz towing the hockey against Stefan Belmont, who just happens to have a beard to be feared. That is full on. And so is this. Tops for 3-1. You know what they say. The Swiss don't miss. Actually had a match dart at 5-3. Couldn't take it, though. And he paid the price because the German took full advantage. Started doing a lot of this. We got the modest fist pump at 5-5. And then the game-winning apology at 6-5. He put the hex on him. No, he put the Kurtz on him. The sweet stylings of one of my favorites, Darius Labanowskis. But this was pretty sweet, too, from Mikhail Untenbuchner. The 171, they were tied at two through four, but that's when the Lithuanian began to pull away. We got his patented celebration here, the pose, and then the fist pump. Had daylight at 4-2. No give up in the German, though. Brought it back. Eighth leg, back-to-back -back maximums. He was on the nine. Not today, but he did tie it up. The problem, that's all he could muster because Darius Labanowskis, lucky D, no, skillful D, takes the last two to win 6-4. It was a long break, he said, and very hard to get back on this stage but he'll take the win. All smiles for Harry Ward. Could be his last ever Euro Tour match. One for the road, Big H. Why not? But he was in all kinds of trouble against a 180 machine. You know him. Devin Peterson, the African warrior, tossed in loads of them. He was on the nine in leg six. His sixth and seventh maximums went on to steamroll from there. Six won the final, not the send-off Big H wanted, but it's the one he got from the Euro Tour. So there you have it. Day one, done and dusted. We've got more arrows this evening. Yes, Friday night flights today on High Roller Radio.